Amen. Well, are we ready to get in the Word? <clears throat> Swords in the air. This is my Bible. It's God's holy Word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. 
I will be taught the word of the living God. Faith will come. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe that today? Amen. I'm telling you, you know, uh, the word of God is, is a, it's not just a powerful sword, a double-edged sword, uh, but it is, uh, it is our rock, our stability, our place of shelter, our place. And uh, do you need the air turned down? Do y'all need the air turned down some more? You already fixed it? Okay. Uh, you know, this is an old building, uh, but thank God we're not in the place of, of, our, of a final destiny of heat. Amen. Come on, saints. Aren't we glad? So just bear with us. It'll cool off in here in a minute. Uh, so what does it say on the screen? My oh, my hideout. Uh, how many remembers when you were kids and we played a game that was hide and, and seek? Hide and go seek. And, uh, you know, our goal in it was to hide, and, but we wanted to be found. Remember that? We wanted to be found. Well, uh, to, the Lord uh, dropped something in me uh, a day or two ago about a hiding place in Him. And that's what we're going to look at today. And I just want you to think about that um, we, we are soldiers in the army of God. We are, some of us are frontline warriors. Uh, I've never seen anyone with, uh, with all of their fatigues and all of their work army suits to go to sleep in. Or to sit around the house and sip coffee in. But he dresses us for war. He dresses us to win. But sometimes the mighty warring soldier Inside that suit is a child. They need a rest. They need a place. They need a place of comfort. And today, we're going to look at a hiding place in him. Is that okay? All right. All right. So, I looked up, I looked up the word uh, hideout, and, um, and it said a place of refuge a retreat, a, 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 a concealment. And so when, uh, when you're when in, in a place that you're hiding, and you know, I don't want you to, to uh, think, well, uh, Sister Barbara's just saying that we can just go sit around and hide out and we don't have to do anything. No, this is for when our, our labor is heavy and this is for when we, we need a rest in Him. And you know, let me tell you how to know that you need, a, need to stop a minute and have a rest in Him. It's when the devil will come to your mind and your thoughts uh, because 90% of your battles is here. And when the enemy comes, and he begins to tell you what you're not or what you're not doing enough of or, or who you're not. That's when you need to know you need to go rest in him. You need to go take a little breather because I'm telling you, look at your neighbor and say, I know you're more than enough. Come on, do it. I know you're more than enough. I know you belong to God. And see, if you belong to God, the El Shaddai, the more than enough, the one who, who, who looked down through the, the time and, uh, and the one who measures the sea in the palm of his hand. I'm talking about a big God today. I'm talking about that you belong to this big God, this mighty, powerful God of the universe. The one, not the one who lost the battle in heaven, but the one one who won the battle in heaven. The one who booted Satan out and a third of the angels who followed him. Who ran them out. Ran them out like, a, like scared animals. I'm telling you today, I'm talking about the one that you can run and rest in. The one that you can hide in. The one who will regroup you. He will power you up. He will get you ready to get you back in the race today. This is who I'm talking about. <laughs> 
Amen. And see, so many times we're, uh, I call it being a battle scarred because we've, we've, we've stood, we've stood our ground and we warred and we, we wouldn't back down and we wouldn't give up and, and we'd stand there not knowing where to turn or what to do. All we knew was that our faith will not fail us. It will not fail us in any time. That sometimes we just got to be still. And in those times, that's the hardest place for some of us. Some of us, it's hard just to be still. It's a lot easier for some of us just to get out there and get on it. You know, I, I, I've said I'm one of those natures that I can't sit around and stare at the ceiling all day. I just can't. I just can't. I'd rather go home and be with Jesus before I'd have to, have to go that route. But you know what? There's a hiding place in him, and we're going we're gonna to look at this. So we're going to first turn to Psalms 143. And I'm like, I'm like when Sister Lisa preaches, she always makes it real clear that don't you take any man's word for what's in this book. You make sure your eyes are on that book. You make sure that you know what you're hearing is what's actually written in the book because you need to know that this word is so powerful it will change and transform your life. It will cause those things of darkness to break and disperse. It will cause the very enemy to lose ground. It's very important not only to hear a message but to receive it and to let it become real in your own personal life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalms 143 verse 9. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say that this is a place that he's not there yet? I need you to deliver me. Is he in a battle? Is he in war? I need you to deliver me. And so I'm going to run to you to hide me. I need you to hide me right now. Teach me to do thy will. They're still learning. Listen, if you've come to the place that, you know, you've got it all, you've been deceived. Because I'm telling you, as long as we can breathe, there is a place of teaching and training and learning. He said, teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Verse 11, quicken me. Make me alive. Quicken means to make me alive. Make me alive, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. What's in trouble? The soul. soul. Let's say this out loud. I'm a spiritual being. being. I possess a soul. soul. And I live in a house of flesh. flesh. And I'm telling you that the enemy... Wants your soul. He wants the realm where your thinking, your emotions, your mind, everything, that processing everything. And if there's anything I can promise you today, he will wait on it. He will be glad to park in your yard and wait for it. But today, if you don't get anything else, from this message today, there is a hiding place in Jesus. There is a place of rest. There is a place of comfort for you and I to get in when our soul needs a rest. How many in the house would say that just for a moment you'd like to go sit on some coastline with a cup of tea or coffee and just Let a few days pass and rest. Come on, with a show of hands. See, we all have a place that we need of rest. And the enemy, the enemy's point is to wear you out. You need to understand that, that I'm going to keep saying this as long as I can breathe. A butcher drives and a shepherd leads. 
When you start feeling pressure, then driven and driven, you got to, you got to hurry, you got to get this, you got to quickly, you got to, you got to, you got to, you need to understand that there is a butcher driving you to the slaughter. Because the shepherd will lead by that voice. He will lead by the gentleness and kindness. He will always lead you. And so today, it is time to find our hiding place in Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so, so today, first of all, we need to be quickened and we need to be renewed and made alive in Him. Amen? And you know, we get sluggish. We, we sometimes we get sluggish with just, just things going on in life. Listen, I'm not talking to you about you going out trying to sin. That's, no, no, we're Christians. We, we serve the Lord. Amen. We live a life to serve him. But listen, there, there, uh, there is a place that, uh, that we get worn out. And, uh, and you know, uh, what is it? There's a scripture that says, don't become weary. Don't, don't, don't be weary in well-doing. You know what that means? That means that we get worn out. Yes, amen. 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 Hurry, hurry. Do this, do that. But you know what? Today, we're going to leave here refreshed. Yes. Say this out loud. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, Today, today. I will leave here I will leave. refreshed. I will. I will. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, I wrote this down. I wrote some stuff down here, and I'll just read this to you, what I wrote down while I was studying. You, you must be as one who runs a race, stumbles and falls and rises and presses on to the goal. Now, I want you to stop and think about this. What would happen... If you stayed to examine the spot where you fell. Now, we're, you got to picture yourself in a race. So we're in a race, and you stumbled and fell. What does that mean? Life itself will cause you to stumble and fall. I'm not talking about falling from grace. I'm not talking about falling from the Lord. I'm talking about in this life. Okay, but if you, if you stop, if you, you're in this race. The race didn't quit. But you stop in this place to examine what made you fall. You, what made you, what, what, what was your obstacle? What, what caused you to be delayed? You're going to lose your time. So you know what the Lord is saying to all of us today? Get up. Brush yourself off. Stop standing and looking at where you fell. And get your mind back in winning that race. And today, he is, he is saying to all of us that it is a time for a fresh start. Yes. It is time for a fresh start. You say, yeah, but Sister Barbara, I've been in this for years. Yes, but it is time for a fresh start, a renewing here. You know what? Listen, if there's anything that we can do today is to say this. I am free. Praise the Lord. I am free. I'm no longer bound Cause there are no chains holding me My soul, it is resting It is such a blessing Praise the Lord Hallelujah I am free. Because you know what? There are things that we are always going to be standing for in the Word of God. There are things that we are always going to be pressing against. Whether it's your health, your finances, your emotions, your stability. There are things that you are continuously always going to be standing for. And the best thing you can do, the best thing you can do is to go sit down a minute, let your mind rest, regroup yourself, and get back in that race. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. Let's say this out loud. No looking back. back. Yesterday's gone. And we can't unscramble eggs. Amen. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you where we're going to hide at. Colossians 3 verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, <clears throat> seek, look for, search. Seek those things which are above, <clears throat> where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. <clears throat> If you notice, when he said, seek those things that are above where Christ sits. Did you know that where Christ is seated, there's not any sickness, disease, poverty, worry, fear, doubt, anxiety. There is none of that where he is seated. And so now he is saying to us, if, then, if, if you then be risen with Christ, is there anybody in the house that you know that you know you have been risen with Christ? Amen. Seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection. You know that word affection right there means your mind. So set your mind. Set, set your, what your, you know, um, I remember as I was growing up, I, I would tell my mother, I'd say, Mother, it's just too hard to serve God. It's just too hard to live for God. And she'd say, well, my goodness, Barbara, that's one of the easiest things there is. She said, it just takes a made-up mind. You make your mind up, I'm going to serve God no matter what. And you know what? The Most of your battle's over. And so he's saying, set your affections or your mind. Set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is what? It's hid. It's hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. And so... So the comfort that we have is that whatever that this life consists of, whatever we walk through, whatever's going on, that there is a place that Jesus is coming. And listen, you know, you say, well, I've heard that my whole life. But I'm telling you today that if you will look around of the things that that have come to pass, Jesus can come any time now. He can come at any moment now. Because, and I don't have time to to, to go over all this with you, the prophecies that was given thousands of years ago. The prophecies have come to pass. And uh, and the one, you know, I've told y'all this one, the one about the scroll, the prophet said, I see this big big scroll rolling in the heavens. And it's got words coming out of it, going down into houses. And he gave the exact centimeters, the exact size of the scroll. And, and, uh, and so now we've got something called a satellite that is to the inch, the size of what the prophet said, that, that is up in the air, up in the, in the heavens. And guess what comes out of it going down into the houses? It's words. And I, see, that's come to pass. There's, there's, uh, and then one prophet said, I see this giant bird, and he's got, he's got people in his mouth, and it sounds like all these, uh, all these chariots running. He didn't had never seen an airplane. He didn't know what an airplane sounded like or looked like. Can can we all say that's come to pass? There is prophecy after prophecy that has been given and come to pass. But I'm telling you today, there's one left. And that is the coming of the great Lord, our Savior, our wonderful Jesus is coming. And he can come any moment. And it's time for us to clean it up, church. It's time for us to begin to live unto him and not unto ourselves. It is time for us that when we're battle scarred, instead of turning against him, is to run to him and run into that place that we can hide ourselves. Can I get an amen in the house? 
Hallelujah. He, he's a, he is who he says he is, but he's teaching us today that we've, we're the ones that's got to run into him. Amen. And don't just go, just don't, listen, I am, I firmly believe in spending time alone with the Lord. I believe in going, you can go in there and tell him all your troubles. You can go in there and talk about whatever you want to talk about, but don't come out until you come out with that peace. Because there is a peace that is undescribable that we've got to have in this hour that precedes his coming. He said there's trouble on every hand, and there is. Wars and rumors of wars, and there is. There are things that are going to transpire in this earth that you have no control over. But the thing you have control over is how you live your life unto God. Amen. 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 Turn to Psalms 27. Psalms 27. And you know what? I'm going to keep saying this too. I know everybody has Bibles on their phones now and... And, and laptops and all that. But you know what? If in a day all of that stuff went dead, you, are, are you familiar with the, with the written Bible? I, I encourage you, I encourage you to, 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 use, uh, to, to use your written Bible. Psalms 27. Boy, it's quiet in the house this morning. Is everybody sleepy? Is everybody tired? Did y'all stay up too late last night? Psalms 27, verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. In his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies. Shall my what be lifted up? Shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me? Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises unto the Lord. When he hides me in his pavilion, in his place of rest, I can promise you I'm going to come out singing songs of joy. I may go in there dragging, dragging what, you know, dragging it behind me. I may go in there very uh, downtrodden, battle scarred, but I promise you if I stay in that place with him, I'll come out with songs of joy in my heart. Amen. Amen. I looked up in Webster, the word trouble, and it said to disturb in the mind. Disturb in the mind, weary. Put to inconvenience, discomfort, distress. And so I could say when I'm in, let me see, how did it say it? For in the time of trouble, for in the time of, of the disturbance of my mind, in the time of worry, in the time of my inconvenience, in the time of my discomfort, in the time when I am so distressed, he will hide me in his pavilion. Amen. Is this good? Isn't this wonderful? It's wonderful to know that though, though we walk and though we war and though we're in a battle and though we fight our way through, there is a resting place. Yes, amen. amen. It's wonderful. Yes, amen. Turn to Psalms. Say in Psalms, Psalms 37. Psalms 37. We're going to read two verses there, verse 7 and verse 8. Verse 7 is a prayer. Verse 8 is the answer. You ready? Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Sit. 
cease not to anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. I'm sorry, I've given you, I've given you, I wrote down my chapter, my, my wrong chapter, because I was going to give you um, 30s. I had a different Bible I was looking in. You know how we are about our Bibles. <laughs> Let's see if it's 35. No, we'll just skip that one. We're going to go straight on to um, Psalms 119. I'm sorry, I apologize. Psalms 119. Psalms 119 and verse 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. See right there, you got to make up your mind that I'm going to. I am going to live for the Lord. I'm going to work for God. I'm going to. Uphold me according unto thy word that I may live. And let... And let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up and I shall be safe. And I will have respect unto thy statutes. How long? How much? Continually. Continually. So what is he saying today? I've got my hope, but my hope is in his word. And let me show you how to hide yourself in his word. Sickness comes against you. It tries to prevail against you. Then here's your hope, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Upon himself he took every sickness and every disease and bore it in my place, and with his stripes I'm healed. Something comes to take your joy. Something comes to take your peace. In him I have my peace. In him will I rest. See, what I'm teaching you today is that you cannot allow yourself to be moved by your circumstance. You cannot allow yourself to be moved by what you see, feel, hear, or think. But you can only be moved by what the Word said. What does the Word say? The Word says, above all things, I would that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. Okay, then I'm going to stand on what the Word has to say then I'm not going to be moved by what somebody else said. But I'm just going to be moved by what the Word says. You say, yeah, but Sister Barbara, what if nothing changes? No, I'm telling you, you keep standing on what the Word says. That's what I'm telling you. Don't you move because of the circumstance. Because if there's anything, I can promise you the enemy will make sure the circumstance is going to be opposite of what God's word said. Because that's where it was from the beginning. He was lifted up in pride. And in the garden, where, what was the challenge that he gave to Adam and Eve was opposite of what God's word said. You'll not die. Go ahead and take it. You'll not die. He started with deception. And if you think he's gone away somewhere and you think that that's all right, you think it's just you thinking that. You think it's just you feeling that. You need to know today you've got an enemy of your soul. And when you feel overwhelmed and when you feel like you cannot go on, you cannot do this any longer. How many in the house you know you have said this, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot deal with this anymore. Amen. Then I'm telling you there's a place that you can go rest in, you can go hide in, and his name is Jesus. Because Jesus said, I am the word. And he is the word today. Amen. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. We're going to all read Psalms, Psalms 91 together. I give you my opinion, but I'm telling you today, you need to leave here with the Word of God. The Word of God is what will transform you. It is, it is what will keep you. It is what will sustain you. Amen. Psalms 91. Go 
There are some in the house that you won't even have to read it because you already know it by heart. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. You ready? All right, read, like, read it like you mean it. Don't be out there whispering. All right, you ready? Here we go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I, do you notice those first three words? Say that. Who will, what? I'm sorry, who? Okay, here we go. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. All right, now we're going to put our person in there. This time we're going to read it, He will deliver me. Are you ready? Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Do you believe these words we're reading today? Or is this just a little story? Or is this just a little Psalms? Or are you hiding this word in your heart? That to know that I know that I know that I know that this word is for me. Say that out loud. This word is for me. This word is for me. Let's read that again. A thousand a thousand. Listen, it didn't say two. A thousand. Get that in you today. A thousand can fall. And listen, we got to see this today. We are mighty, mighty men and women in this mighty armor of God. We're not victims to a circumstance, but we're victors through Jesus. Hey, I'm talking about Jesus. Woo. All right. Let's read seven, verse seven again. You ready? Here we go. Read it. It shall fall at thy side. Ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Woo! Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of who? The wicked. Of who? The wicked. Of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. See, he's telling us today, he's our refuge. He's our place we can run and hide in. This powerful word of God works. You know, it's like Sister Jesslyn said this morning, that you'll be going along and you're warring and you're battling and you're dealing with the same thing over and over. And it's, it's month after month, year after year. Then all of a sudden, you keep standing on what he said. You don't allow yourself to get moved. Even if you get off it, it's like when David said, I'm telling you, Lord, I, even when I'm afraid, I will trust you. And in those times, we don't know what we're going to do. I'm telling you that you keep standing and in a moment, in a second, he turns that thing, he changes it. And you know it was God's hand that moved. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 10, let's read that one. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Do you notice that it didn't say it won't ever try to come against you? It didn't say that. But when it does come against you, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to receive it and accept it? And but Well, you know, I guess God's trying to teach me something. That's the biggest lie the devil ever brought in this earth. 
God teaches us through his word. He doesn't teach you through suffering and pain. He teaches you through, I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost in the house this morning. This word is powerful. We've got to get a hold of it and hide it in our hearts. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. What are you going to do with the raging plagues that's coming? That's, that's in this earth right now. What are we going to do with it? I'm telling you, it, it, i tell you what we're going to do with it. We're going to get Psalms chapter 91 out. And when it comes against us, we're going to say, uh-uh. No, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. You say, yeah, but what if you get that COVID? I'm telling you, I'm expecting, and, we, and I had COVID. And I, listen, I expected it to be the mildest, the weakest, the, the least that it could do to me. Why? Because just because it came against me, you think I laid the word of God down. No, I walked in that house. And and I stood on what the word said. I'm telling you, I know this. This word works. Yes. Hey, it works. We just got to peel it off these pages and get it in our hearts. Hey, are we excited about Jesus today? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Me too. I'm always excited about Jesus. All right, here we go. Verse 11. Y'all ready? Now listen, this is truth. I'm, I'm letting you read the truth. All right, you ready? All right, let's read. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To what? In how much? Every once in a while? Every now and then? Oh, wait a minute. This said always. Oh, can, can we really take this word at home with us today and believe this? He gives his angels charge to keep you in all your ways. Verse 12. Here we go. They shall bear thee up in their hands, <gasps> lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Listen, you remember, remember when I rolled down those stairs. <laughs> what was that, three years ago, four years ago? Three or four years ago. I rolled down a flight of stairs. I, I was in a hurry and hooked my foot on that top one, and it just threw me down. And I was bloop, 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 bloop rolling down those stairs. And, you know, I was addled at first. And when I... I you know, kind of got myself there. I'm laying all in a wad on the floor. And you know what come out of my mouth first? He has given his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways, to bear me up lest I dash my foot against a stone. And I'm here to tell you, I didn't break a bone. I didn't do nothing. Oh, man, they called the ambulance out there to check me out. And they, they wanted to haul me into the emergency room. I looked that guy dead in the eyes, and I said, I came up here to watch the move that uh, showed Jesus, and that's exactly where I'm going tonight. That's where I'm going. When I leave, when, when, when we get done here, that's where I'm going tonight. He said, well, I can't make you go. I can't make you go get in the ambulance. But if you start feeling dizzy and you start doing this, I thought to myself, I ain't starting none of that junk. I've, got, I've come up here. It was at Branson. And that's exactly where I'm going, what I'm doing. You say, well, are you Miss Super? No, I'm not nothing. Here's what I know. I know that either this word is truth or not, and I choose to believe that it's truth. I choose to believe that when I'm in trouble, See, it didn't, I don't have to wait till I get out of trouble and everything's going good and everything's great. No, when I'm in trouble, that's when this word works the best for me. Yes, Come on, saints. Yes. Oh, yeah, we're getting this, aren't we? Are we getting this? All right. Okay, what's our next verse? All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. Now, I'm going to stop right there just for a minute because I need you to see this. Do you really believe you're going to go out and walk on a vicious lion a, a, like in the natural lion? No. No, he's talking about demonic spirits. Because I can prove this to you. I just don't have time to teach it to you today. But when they list a lion and adder, now a lion can viciously rip you to pieces. See, that's why the, they illustrate, he illustrates something that you can compare to. An adder is a poisonous viper that can take you out. And so wait a minute, but what did he say? What did, what did God say? Let me, let's, let's read again. What did he say? Thou shalt tread, that means walk on. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Boy, I'm telling you, 
This is powerful. This is so powerful. Because, here we go, 14. Let's all read. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. There is your answer to your, your prayer. Because he hath known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him when? I'm sorry, where, where's he at with you? In trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And by, listen, verse 16, look at your neighbor and say, this is talking to you. You know why? Because the enemy likes to make you believe your life's over, you're done, might as well check out, go, go, you know, tap, tap it out, you're gone, done. But, but I choose to believe verse 16. How about you? Does anybody in the house want to believe verse 16 with me? All right, here we go. Now let's read it like we believe it. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Woo! Hey! Hallelujah. Did we get this this morning? Did we learn something this morning? Have we got a hideout in him? Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Jody, is your friend's name Nora? Yes. Nora. Uh, all morning this morning, uh, I've heard her name. I've heard heard her. And um, so I just, uh, I don't know if she's walking through something today. I don't know what's going on with her. If we need to pray for her. Is there anything y'all know about her? Yes, yes. Well, um, I just, uh, and I, I, I was praying for her earlier uh, when I went to the back. and Because I, I kept hearing that name. And uh, so I, uh, I told the Lord, you know, if there's something that I need to say to her, will. But I've not, I've not received anything. But I just need to, um, I just need to let her know that um, circumstances will not prevail in the matter that she has before the Lord. I just heard that, that circumstances will not prevail. They will not prevail. Yes, yes. And, uh, and uh, uh, there is a sweetness. Yes, there is a sweetness that um, about, I've never met this lady, but there's a sweetness about her. But uh, the Lord is uh, telling me that he is going to sweeten her like sugar sweetens tea. And that is a, a supernatural thing. And, uh, and so just to be encouraged. I would just say that to her, that to be encouraged today. That uh, this message is for her to rest. To find a place of rest. Yes. Yes, isn't that wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? You, know, you say, well, uh, you know, uh, God knows everything. Isn't that good? I mean, that's so wonderful that he knows everything. It is. Is there anybody in this house that you don't know that you know that you know that if you stop breathing right now, that, you, that you've got things settled with God, that you know that you know you'd go to heaven? And the reason I ask that is because our little church is like a mission. People come, people go. We, you know, I, somebody asked me one time, well, how many do you run in church? I said, well, if everyone who's ever been here, I, I'd have to probably rent a big building because we're, we're like a mission. We're like, a, but there's been so many times that God would bring, uh, I remember two or three gentlemen that came here and after service, they came to me after service and I sat right here on this pew and led them to the Lord and uh, they gloriously gave their heart and life to the Lord and then I would hear that within a week or two they passed they had a heart attack or they 
You know, they just didn't, they were gone. And um, I know this, I know that God will not lead you to a dry well. He will not lead you to a dry well. And, if, and he said that the only way we can come to him is that the Spirit draws us. I can give you some pretty flowery words, but I'm not smart enough. I, I'm just not. I totally depend on the Holy Ghost. I just do. But if the, if the Spirit of the Lord tugs at your heart, make sure you answer that call, whether it's in this building or through live stream. I'd like to tell you, I can give you an assurance that you're going to live forever in this earth, but I can't. But you can live forever with Him. That I can assure you of. Amen? Amen. And uh, so if there's anyone in this house, it's so easy and so simple. Or maybe, you know what? There have been many times down through life that I just felt like I was cold in the Lord. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I loved him and I wanted to serve him, but it just seemed like, you know, he... Where is he? You know, I just didn't feel him there. And I just needed to renew. I'm a firm believer in repentance. I, I don't believe you just repent when you get born again. I believe, I believe in repenting. I, I believe in just, and just like uh, in your family, if you've done somebody in your family wrong, you know, and you go to them, you say, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it that way, or I didn't mean to hurt you. I wouldn't hurt you for nothing. You know, you repent. You repent of that. And I believe that's how we are in this, in this kingdom. That if you, you have something there, that you just need to get it off your heart. Get it off. Then just get it off. And move on. As he said this morning, just move on with him. Just get back in that race. Just get started back in there again. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand.